Today we're going to talk about cell division and mitosis. But before we talk about cell division and mitosis, I want to show you what um, how prokaryotic cells reproduce. Last time um, in our video lecture on meiosis, we talked about and discussed in class how meiosis is the process that um, eukaryotic cells and multicellular organisms um, use in order to produce um, haploid cells and that those cells are used in sexual reproduction. Well, there are other types of organisms out there that don't reproduce sexually, they reproduce asexually and we're going to take a look at how prokaryotic cells or bacteria reproduce. So to start out, um, prokaryotic cells reproduce by a process called binary fission. Um, the cell increases in size slightly, um, the DNA is replicated, the other cellular components are replicated as well, and then each cell divides into two daughter cells. So that at the end of binary fission, so we start out with our prokaryotic cell, our DNA is copied, the cell begins to divide, and at the end of binary fission, we are going to get two cells that are genetically identical to each other, but they're also genetically identical to the original cell. Um, we will come to find out that this process is exactly identical, or I don't want to say identical, but very similar to um, the process of mitosis that eukaryotic cells use for growth and repair. So let's take a look at that. Before we get into that, I just want to recap that meiosis results in new, dot, in new cells with half the number of chromosomes as the original cell. So in meiosis, we're cutting the chromosome number in half and we're producing four genetically different haploid cells. So we're producing our gametes. For females, those are your egg cells. For males, those are your sperm cells. Now mitosis is different than meiosis in that we are going to be producing only two daughter cells that are going to be genetically identical to each other and to the original cell. Um, also, both daughter cells are going to be diploid in terms of their chromosome number. Now mitosis, as I said before, is used in growth and repair. So um, remember that you know in meiosis we're producing our um, haploid cells, our sperm cells and our egg cells and when a sperm cell fuses with an egg cell that's called fertilization and then that first cell after fertilization is called a zygote. Well that zygote is diploid in number and of course you are not still a single celled organism you grew, and how did your cells ultimately end up growing? They, they grew through this process of mitosis, cell division in mitosis. So let's take a closer look at that. So the cell cycle is the series of events that the cell goes through as it grows or prepares to divide, go through mitosis. Now cell uh, the cell cycle is divided into two parts interphase, and we talked about interphase before during meiosis, it's the same thing, and cell division. And cell division consists of two parts, mitosis and cytokinesis. Mitosis is when the nucleus itself divides, and cytokinesis is when the um, cytoplasm divides. So here we've got our interphase, G1, S, and G2, and then we've got the two parts of cell division, mitosis, and cytokinesis. Now recall, you've already taken notes on this, so this should be quick. So interphase is the period of the cell cycle between cell divisions. So it's divided into three parts, G1, which is just a growth phase, S is when DNA replication takes place, and G2, when growth is finalized. G0 is a cell that's not going through the cell cycle or preparing for division. And an example of a cell and cell division is a um, neuron in your brain. Um, that's why it's so detrimental to have you know, any sort of traumatic brain injury because um, those cells in your brain can't um, repair themselves, grow and repair themselves. Um, so that's why big um, head injuries are such a problem. 
So cell division is broken up into two parts. The first part is mitosis, and mitosis is literally the division of the nucleus. So uh, mitosis allows for the copied DNA to be distributed to the offspring cells. So we want each of our daughter cells to have its own um, copy of the genetic information so it can produce its proteins and function as normal. Now my mitosis is divided into uh, four phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And the acronym that I used, um, that I like to use in order to remember those phases in order is P PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So we're going to walk through each of the parts of mitosis. Now in prophase, um, what happens is the chromatin, so that's the loosely coiled DNA in the nucleus, will condense into these structures called chromosomes, and you can see them over here. Lovely little chromosomes right here inside the nucleus. Um, the spindle will begin to form, so the spindle is formed by the centrioles, so remember those centrioles um, from our um, cell organelle unit, our centrioles. Okay, so those spindle fibers are produced by the centrioles and our nuclear membrane is going to start to break down so that we can move these chromosomes around and divide our cell so that we can, so that each new daughter cell has its own genetic information. After prophase is metaphase. Now metaphase is probably the easiest of the phases to identify in a picture because all the chromosomes are lined up nice and pretty along the midline or across the center of the cell. So this is the metaphase plate and we've got our chromosomes all lined up so nicely along our metaphase plate or the middle of the cell. So metaphase starts with M, middle starts with M. We've got our chromosomes lined up along the middle of the cell. Now each chromosome is connected to a spindle fiber. Technically, as each chromatid is connected to a spindle fiber. So this spindle fiber is going to connect to this chromatid. This spindle fiber connects to this chromatid, which is important when we come to our next phase, which is anaphase, where those spindle fibers contract and begin to pull the individual chromatids towards opposite ends of the cell. So that um, spindle fiber is contracting and pulling those chromosomes to um, this pole of the cell, and then these spindle fibers are contracting and pulling these chromosomes to this pole of the cell. It's uh, one of those other um, um, other phases that is pretty easy to identify when you're looking at a picture. So this is a nice this is a nice cell, really pretty cell picture of anaphase taking place inside of a cell. So once anaphase has taken place. We'll then move on to telophase. So in telophase, the chromosomes are going to gather at opposite ends of the cell. They're going to slowly begin to relax and unwind back into chromatin, and two new nuclear membranes are going to begin to form. There's also something else occurring at the same time as telophase, and that um, step is cytokinesis. Now cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm. Now remember the cytoplasm has all of our organelles, and um, during interphase, we made copies of all of our organelles so that those organelles could be distributed evenly into each daughter cell. So cytokinesis um, usually occurs at the exact same time as telophase. So the nuclear membrane is beginning to reform, the chromosomes are relaxing into chromatin, the spindle fibers breaking down, and you've got the division of the cytoplasm as well. So the end result of cell division and remember, cell division is mitosis and cytokinesis, is two genetically identical cells. And those cells, um, when we're dealing with eukaryotic cells, are going to be, or human eukaryotic cells are going to be. So two genetically identical. Let's add here, because we're dealing with, let's deal with human cells, diploid cells. Now, cytokinesis occurs differently when you look at animal cells as opposed to plant cells because there is an organelle that plant cells have that animal cells do not have, and that is the cell wall. 
So cytokinesis in animal cells occurs by a process known as cleavage, and it begins with the formation of a cleavage furrow. So um, picture a membrane sort of pinching in, and then once that membrane has pinched in completely, um, those two cells are going to divide, and you'll have two genetically identical diploid cells. Now in plant cells, because we have the cell wall to deal with, we're not going to get a cleavage furrow. Instead, what ends up happening is something pretty cool. We've got these vesicles that contain cell wall material, which is cellulose, and those vesicles are shuttled um, into, um, into the middle of the cell um, between the two nuclei. And those vesicles keep on forming and keep on forming until ultimately we get something called a cell plate, which is right here. And that cell plate will also ultimately end up forming the new cell wall. So the main difference between cytokinesis in animal cells as opposed to plant cells is in animal cells you have this thing called a cleavage furrow that ends up taking place and um, a process known as cleavage, whereas in plant cells you, you are forming a cell plate that will um, that contains cell wall material that will ultimately end up dividing um, each plant cell into two. Control of cell division. So cell division or the cell cycle is regulated at different checkpoints and there are different signals that regulate the cell cycle. Now the cell cycle is that series of events that the cells go to to prepare to divide and then divide. So that's interphase and then cell division which consists of mitosis and cytokinesis. So there are three main checkpoints that the cell sort of stops and pauses at in order to make sure that it's ready to proceed with, with the next step. So the first is G1. You know, is the cell healthy enough? Is it large enough to divide? So there's a checkpoint and some signals going on there that the cell's kind of reflecting on itself and checking itself to make sure it's healthy and it's ready to proceed with a very important step, which is DNA replication or synthesis. At the end of G2, or during G2, we've got DNA repair enzymes coming in to check replication. So we're double checking that DNA replication has gone off without a hitch. And then um, we can enter um, mitosis. So if all these things, the checkpoint at G1 goes well, and if the checkpoint goes um, well at G2, we will then enter mitosis. Um, at the end of mitosis, a cell can either enter G1 again and get go through the go through the cell cycle again and get prepare and get ready to divide again, or it can enter um, G0, which is quite, um, sort of just like a, a steady state. It's not getting ready to divide at all. Now, what cancer is, is uncontrolled cell growth. So um, that's when a mutation takes place in a gene that produces a protein that regulates cell growth and division. So there are proteins, enzymes, that regulate and check um, the cell cycle. So there's um, checkpoints, there's proteins and enzymes that do these checking that takes place at G1. There's enzymes and proteins that check to make sure that the cell is healthy and ready to divide at the end of G2. If any of those, if a mutation takes place in any of those signals and any of those proteins, then what's going to happen is that the cell is going to constantly be dividing over and over and over again. And that is what we call cancer. It's when a cell has run away from the cell cycle and it just keeps on going through interphase and dividing, going through interphase and dividing, going through interphase and dividing. Now, there are um, benign tumors, which are sort of non-harmful tu tumors, and then there are um, harmful tumors, or harmful cancers, and it really depends on the location of where the tumor is. If it's a benign tumor, um, it can usually be taken out um, with surgery, um, reduced in size with radiation, chemotherapy. It's not causing that much harm to your body functioning as a whole or homeostasis as a whole. Now, if it's um, one of those harmful tumors, it's probably in a location where it's dis disrupting homeostasis of other um, other cell functions or other um, organ systems, and that's when it's becoming a problem. 
And um, again, that can be treated um, by surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, things like that. So just to recap, you um, should have gotten out of this video lection how prokaryotic cells um, reproduce. Um, summarize the events of the cell cycle. So what are the events of the cell cycle? Um, you should know the phases of mitosis, um, the order of the phases of mitosis, a little bit about what happens during each phase of mitosis. How does um, cytokinesis differ in plant cells as opposed to animal cells? Whoops, forgot a question mark, so let's add that. So how, do, how does cytokinesis differ in plant cells as opposed to animal cells? And then cancer, what is cancer? Um, in terms of the cell cycle. And with that, um, complete the following questions on the Google form and write down any questions that you have. Have a great night.